Hey guys, I'm back. Um, it stopped speeding, meth recovery. Um, and we are at the site of the canal that I almost drowned in about a month ago, a little over a month. Um, what the fuck was I doing in the canal? Well, I told you guys if I ever disappear, it's because I'm getting high and I disappeared. So, I mean, you guys know what's up. And, uh, when I'm doing these videos, I'm sober right now. You know, we got a little over a month to clean off everything. And, uh, you know, this is my first time coming back here since uh, everything happened. And it's very, uh, very, very strange feeling. It almost feels like whenever you go to a cemetery and the vibe there is just like, there's just like death in the air. And it's like a very stoic, just very, uh, I don't even know how to explain it, but the, the vibe here is very eerie and creepy because this is uh, almost like the last last place I was ever at, like on this earth. And um, that particular day, I failed to heed these signs right here. Um, unsafe. I uh, had bathed and showered in these canals, not this particular one, but there's canals that run all through series of Modesto. I'm from Ceres, uh, well, I'm not from here, but I live in Ceres, and, uh, you know, I never bathed in this particular canal, but I didn't think uh, anything of it, and I completely missed this sign, and if you watched my video about the day I went crazy from meth, you know I'm all about signs, and uh, when I'm on meth, I read signs, I read way too deep into things, and the funny thing about this sign, this is like almost like right where I fucking died at. And uh, it says TTD. And, <laughs> you know, people that used to watch my old streams know that uh, I was a huge fan of Hampton Brandon. So it's just funny that I missed the sign that day. Like, kind of God was screaming at me not to get in this fucking water. But anyways, what the fuck was I doing in the water? Um, I live at a sober house here in Ceres, California. And let me flip this camera real quick. If I can, actually, I don't think I can flip it. Never mind. Um, I live in Ceres, and I live in a sober house here. And at one time, the house manager of the sober house was completely cool with us getting high, getting twacked out. He was cool with it. He didn't have a problem with it. So I was getting high at the sober house for a long time. But, uh, you know, eventually the management changed. We have a house manager now who uh wants us going to meetings want us, wanting us to be sober thank god because that's what i really need but i you know had a slip uh did some meth and i stayed up for three days and i didn't come home for three days and i just kept telling my my house manager that hey i got this job i'm not going to be able to come home today and he was buying it, but by the third day, I knew he wasn't going to buy it anymore. And the problem was that whenever you do meth, you get really smelly and stinky. Why are those my clothes? This is about where I jumped into the water. No, those aren't my clothes. Never mind. Um, about right here is where I jumped in the water anyways. I was really smelly, stinky. It was very obvious. I hadn't showered. Smelt like meth sweat. Uh, so what I ended up doing is there's a Carl's Jr. right over here. I walked into the Carl's Jr. And I got a cup and, uh, I filled the cup up with soap from the, oh, and there's a guy staying right here. I mean, homelessness and poverty is all around this place. But, uh, anyways, I got this cup, filled it up with soap, walked back over here and I was planning on just jumping in this canal, uh, cleaning up a little bit. And then going back to the sober house and trying to play off my meth high, even though when I'm on meth, it's very obvious. I wear it on my face. I can't stop twitching. I can't really talk good. Um, but I thought if I just, you know, cleaned up a little bit, maybe he wouldn't be able to tell. So anyways, um, I didn't really want to jump all the way in. Uh, I kind of wanted to just you know, hang off of this thing and dunk my head in it and my armpits and all the stuff I need to wash and then get out. 
The problem was, though, I hadn't slept or ate in three days, and my my joints in my body, my legs and arms were starting to lock up. And um, I fucking fell in, which at the time I thought was actually pretty good because the water was very, very cold that day. And, uh, I, you know, I got used to the water really quick because I fell all the way in. But, um, yeah, I fell in and I finished up my shower. And what I didn't really realize is there's this current in the canal. And it's not really too bad right here, but the farther it gets going down that way, it gets stronger and stronger. And the other thing I didn't realize is uh, the water gets deeper and deeper. And it's actually 12 feet deep over there. There's a little mark that says 12. I'm guessing that's 12 feet. I don't know. I could be wrong. I couldn't, I'm six foot tall and I couldn't touch the bottom. But over here, I could. I could just walk in it over here. Um, so I got in the water and I finished my shower. And I try to climb up this thing right here. But um, since I hadn't ate or slept in three days and I've been binging, um, I didn't have, like, the muscle strength to pull myself up out of here. So I was like, fuck, man. I think I'm going to have to, like, swim over here. So I was thinking I could just swim over here to the very end. And I didn't realize it got deeper and deeper, so I thought I could just jump up and prop myself up on this wall and climb out. What I really, really needed to do and what would have been smart was just to ask for help. But, you know, I can't ever ask for help. I can't swallow my pride and ask for help. And also, I was in my boxers. I took all my clothes off and put them right here. And I didn't want, you know, someone to have to pull me out and I'm in my boxers. That's kind of fucking embarrassing, but not as embarrassing as what was about to happen. So, uh, you know, I fell in the water, but I can still stand, you know, and um, I wasn't, you know, everything was still okay. Like, you know, I just had to find a way to fucking get out of this goddamn canal. So uh, I just start walking with the current and I was going to go over to this wall over here. And uh, it starts getting deeper and deeper, but I still don't really think anything of it. And, well, oh, right about right here, you can see the current picks up and then it just kind of drops down. And uh, right about here is where I just realized that like, oh, they, this is kind of bad, man. Uh, the current took me away and um, I got about, I started freaking out, man, and, uh, man, when you're on meth, your heart is already racing, you already got hella adrenaline going, but, man, when, you, when you're when you on meth and then you're about to die, too, like, the uh, the amount of adrenaline going was, was insane, bro. I started really freaking out, and the more I freaked out and the more I panicked, the more energy I was wasting, like, waddling in the water. You know what I mean? And as you can see, like it's going fast right here and it's going under this thing. And I don't know what's under here, man. I don't know if it's like a hole and maybe you can like swim under the street and pop out on the other side. I really don't know, man, but that's like, that'd be a long way to swim. And you see all this trash right here floating, man. And like straight up, that would have been my body floating that day, man. Uh, if an angel didn't come and save me. So... Let's go on this side because that's where everything kind of happened. Um, right here. At this 12, I remember this 12 right here. And I don't know if that means 12 feet or I don't know what that means. But right here, you see that little chip? That little hole right there in the concrete. Um, I was about to go under right here. I was about to get sucked into whatever that sucks into. I don't know. And you can see the current's really going. Um, I was, my, I remember my head going under the water and, uh, it was hard to like pull myself back up out and I got a big mouthful of water and this was some really nasty water, but, uh, I got a big mouthful of water and I remember thinking, oh fuck, I'm going to drown. Like, this is really fucking bad. And so the current's just taking me. And, uh, 
I grab onto this chip right here, that hole you see, I grab onto that with my two fingers and uh, pretty much like my body is just like getting pulled that way and I have my two fingers like that and I'm just holding on for dear life and uh, I start screaming for help and everybody that's driving by is or see there's like a bicycle that just came by everyone that's jogging by and bicycling by they all have headphones so I'm literally right here like holding on to this little fucking hole and I'm screaming for help 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 at the top of my lungs I'm just screaming help and I'm seeing people come by but they can't hear me because they have headphones and uh it was like I remember I just started crying I'm just like why won't anyone help me like fuck man please help I'm just like and it felt like 30 minutes went by it felt like I was just like here for at least 30 minutes but it was probably like 5 to 10 minutes and uh if you know like if you've ever binged on meth your your fingers start cramping up um everything just starts cramping up you lose strength and, like, I probably could have climbed myself up out of this if I had, you know, not been up for three days and not eaten three days. But, uh, this guy that lives in this house right here, he hears me. I guess he was in his backyard, thank fucking God. And, uh, I guess he jumped this fence right here. And he's like, hey, man, like, what's going on? I'm like, bro, I'm homeless. Uh, I'm just trying to take a shower in here and I like I'm about to die. This shit's about to suck me up And he's like, all right, just wait a minute And I'm like, where the fuck are you? I remember just screaming out where the fuck are you going? What do you mean? Wait a minute pull me out. I was like fucking asshole pull me out But he made the right call Because I weighed 200 pounds and he was like a little Indian dude. So The if he tried to pull me out, he probably would have pulled himself in So he made the right call, but he leaves and he doesn't tell me why he leaves so he leaves I'm holding on to this thing and I just feel my fingers starting to give man and I try to switch to my other fingers I try to grab onto this 12 I remember trying to jump up and grab onto this 12 but I kept losing it and thank god I was able to get back into my little hole right here and I remember I tried to swim over here and grab onto this thing but I couldn't fucking do that either that little hole was the only thing I could really grab onto and so um an older Indian man comes, I'm, I'm guessing that's his father, father-in-law or something, and he's on the phone and he's calling the cops and I'm screaming at this old man, just like, man, pull me out, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why are you standing there? And um, so finally that man comes back and he uh, pulls a rope down and I grab onto the rope and he pulls me out and... Uh, Man, that guy's a fucking angel, bro. That guy seriously saved my life. So I showed you guys that little chip I was able to put my fingers in. Um, I remember whenever the current was was pulling me down um, right before I saw that chip. Uh, you know, I was convinced I was going to pass away. I used to work at a homeless shelter. And... Uh, one of my clients, they found his body in the canal. We don't know if he was murdered and like someone dumped it there or maybe he was doing something similar to me. Maybe he accidentally fell in. He was also a meth head. And, uh, you know, I went to his funeral and we had like a candlelit vigil uh, at the canal that he uh, passed away in. And like, I didn't even think of that whenever I, when I jumped in that canal, just because like, I had done it before, but not at that particular one, and I had no problems. And uh, I've even done streams where, like, I'm swimming in the canal. So I like, yeah, I just all these warning signs, man. And I, you know, when when I'm high in meth, I don't see these signs, man. And I think I everything's under control, and I think I got this, and I don't. But anyways, um, I remember when I was floating away grabbing onto that little chip that saved my life and um this uh angel sin airwaves song i don't know why i keep bringing that band up but they have a song called lifeline and it's all about you know like fucking up in life but like somebody helps you out and 
helps you get out of that and they're like literally your lifeline and i remember when i when i grabbed onto that chip uh i remember just thinking uh hearing that song um in my head like here's your lifeline and i remember just like repeating that a bunch in my in my head like here's your lifeline and while i was grabbing onto that hole i remember you know making a deal with god uh, a god that i didn't think i believed in a god that i had a resentment towards and um I remember making a deal with him like man if you get me out of this i'll never do meth again you know and i've said that thousands of times i've been locked up in jail and i pray to god the god i didn't think i believed in always praying when i'm in an emergency situation get me out of here i'll never do meth again and a month later i'm doing meth again but like that little hole right there was literally my lifeline. If that hole wasn't right there, I'm a, uh, I'm a hundred percent convinced that uh, I would have passed away that day, and I would have passed away in a very, very traumatic way. Um, drowning is probably not a very good way to pass uh, pass away. Uh, oh God. Um. Ever since. Ever since that day, I keep having this recurring fucking dream that I'm driving uh, alongside the highway and and uh, there's the ocean to the side of me and like a giant or like a very tall person, like a very big person comes up beside my car and they, they pick up my car and they throw it in the ocean and I, I am falling in the air and I, I crash into the ocean and then... Uh, my car starts filling up with water and I'm like kicking the windows and I'm trying to open the door and I can't and I like uh, the water's filling up and filling up and then uh, by the time I'm about to drown I wake up and ever since that day I've been having that dream every night um, just being back over there like I had like I, I don't know if you guys noticed I cut it I just cut the video uh, I should have like kept you know, continue doing the video at that spot. I had to get out of there. Uh, thinking about this shit really, really stresses me and freaks me the fuck out. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that man threw the rope in there and he pulled me out. And uh, his wife was with him. His wife came out there and I was in my boxers. And these were boxers I'd been wearing for like three days and they had holes in them. Um, and my fucking ball sack was hanging out. And I was really, really embarrassed. I kept apologizing to her. And they were just like, dude, don't worry, man. You almost died. Like, your ball sack hanging out isn't, like, that big of a deal. Um, I fucking was bloody all over. My elbows, my knees uh, were all bloody from, like, holding onto that concrete so hard for dear life. Uh, my fingers were bleeding. Um... The cops came and uh, they came about a couple minutes. I mean, like, I'm convinced, man, like, when that guy threw that rope in, I had maybe a couple more minutes until I had to let go of that thing because my fingers were cramping up. And uh, the cops came about right about at the time where I probably would have been going under. Uh, so if that Indian man wasn't in his backyard that day, uh, I would probably be able to pass away. And I remember them talking about my client that passed away in the canal and how uh, his body was bloated. He was a really skinny dude, but uh, uh, one of my friends that worked at the homeless shelter I worked at had to go identify the body. And, he, and she said that, uh, you know, his, his, his cheeks were bloated. His whole body was just really fat and bloated. I guess probably because when you drown, you, uh, you're, suck you're breathing in water, maybe. You're sucking in water. I don't know. But uh, I just picture my body there floating in that canal all fat and bloated. and uh, That wouldn't have happened if I didn't do meth. I wouldn't have had any reason to go on that canal, you know, if I hadn't done meth. I would have, had, I would have just been chilling at home, you know, safe and cozy in a warm bed instead of in, like, freezing cold water drowning to death. And that's where my meth addiction takes me, man. Um, and it's really strange because it's October now, and it was this time last year when I had that experience when I lost my mind on meth, and and I thought I died. And I really just lost my mind. I didn't actually die, but I thought I died. 
Um, and um, that happened last October, and I'm finding these parallels like that. That October, um, uh, I had just seen my my girlfriend at the time, and she was with my family. And then, like, I went off and did meth. And uh, this time, I, my family and my now fiance, uh, we all went to San Francisco and spent a few weeks together. You can go back in my shorts, and I, I made a little short. I was uh, at the Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, I asked my girlfriend to marry me. Um, um, I remember, I remember the, that moment when I asked her to marry me, it was like one of the happiest moments of my life, man, because uh, my family was with me and I haven't really made my family proud and since I was probably like a little kid, man, you know, I've been doing drugs a long time and, and that day uh, I saw my mom happy for the first time in probably like 20 years. And she was like truly happy and I haven't seen my mom like that in a long time and my fiance was really happy and I was really happy. I remember having a sense of like uh, responsibility like, all right, man, you're getting married now. No more fucking around. You can't be getting high, dude. Like you need to be there for this woman. And I remember feeling really, really proud, uh, really, really proud. Like uh, I remember just like... Uh, Having this sense of responsibility and, and thinking in my head, I'm not, I'm never doing, I'm, I'm not getting high ever again, you know, uh, because I have to be there for this woman. I have to be a good husband, and um, you know, I ended up getting high maybe like a, like a week or two after this, man, and the same thing happened the year before, and there's just something about like. When I have good shit happen to me in my life, I have to self-sabotage it and fuck it up and burn it to the ground. Um, I had a really, really fucking awesome job. Uh, I was working at this homeless shelter helping people get sober. And uh, life was going really good. And anytime life's going really good, I go do meth and I fucking burn everything to the ground. And right now I have nothing, you know. I, I, I don't even have a cent to my name. And this is like kind of where I'm comfortable. No job, no money nobody in my life like this is where I'm comfortable but when I have like the good job and fiance and I have everything uh, it's like really scary man and I fuck it up every goddamn time and I'm fucking so tired of hurting this woman bro like I've just put this poor woman through fucking hell and I'm so fucking tired of it man and like I, I, I made a deal with God that day like Man, if you get me through this, like, I'm never touching meth again. And and since that day, I've been going to multiple AA meetings every fucking day. I got a sponsor that's, really, like, a big hard ass, you know. And, like, I work on my steps every day. And um, I feel fucking goddamn terrible about what happened, man. And I can't get past how bad I feel. Like, I just walk around with this sick stomach in my feeling. I um sick feeling in my stomach uh and it's just to the point now where like uh it's that feeling like i don't know if somebody ever tells you like someone died and you just feel like really sick to your stomach like i just have that feeling in my stomach all the time bro and i'm just trying to learn how to just like carry on with my everyday life with this fucking sick feeling in my stomach and not use and there's still people at the sober house i live at that use meth and like last night my roommate was fucking snoring loud as shit and it was pissing me off because I have an appointment this morning um, at this temp agency and I had to be there at eight in the morning. And so like, I was just like hella fucking tired and I go down to the living room and then like there's people doing meth in the living room and there was just nowhere for me to sleep. Um, and like being around that, like knowing that stuff's in my house and knowing that like it's very easily accessible and it will get rid of this sick feeling in my stomach is like really fucking hard. 
and staying sober is really fucking hard right now. But uh, I get moments of happiness here and there. Uh, when I made that last video about weed, um, a lot of people left a lot of really nice comments and that, that was really happy. And, you know, when I get to talk to my fiance, I'm really happy, but uh, these are just kind of passing moments. And as a drug addict, I want to feel good all the time and I, I don't get to feel good all the time. And I'm kind of coming to terms with that. I'm not always just going to get to feel good. Um, but I remember when I walked away from that canal, man, I remember thinking, uh, I'm not supposed to be here. Like I'm supposed to be on the other side. I don't, I don't know what happens when we die, but I'm not supposed to be in this, in this world. And, uh, the one cool thing about that and like the one good thing about having a near death experience and the blessing from it is like all the petty shit that was pissing me off, like my roommate snoring and like, you know, not having money and just all the, like the, the kind of dumb shit that doesn't really matter. It hasn't really been affecting me as much because I realize I'm like not even really supposed to be here. And like people that know me from my IRL streaming days, there was three or four near death experiences back then. One that really stands out is like, uh, and there's a video of this. Um, I passed out under an RV and they were about to drive off and my head was like right under the wheel and they were about to drive off and if they did, it would have crushed my head. Uh, but a stream sniper came and woke me up and pulled me out before they started the RV and drove off. Um, so I'm 100% convinced that something, a higher power, creator, whatever, is keeping me on this planet alive for a reason so i've almost died so many goddamn fucking times because of drugs and alcohol and um you know the a the a meetings are really heavily based on god and i always did aa and i've always tried to get sober through aa but i never could get behind i never wanted to give god like all the credit like whenever i stay sober whenever i get a job i want to take the credit i don't want to give that to god and in aa you have to give that credit to god and like now I'm 100% convinced there's a God that's keeping me alive and uh, giving me strength every day to stay sober. And um, so that's kind of a blessing in itself that I, I've kind of come to realize that there's a God after this experience. And um, I haven't really had any meth cravings since this experience. And um, Meth cravings aren't like any other craving in the world. Like you can crave for a cigarette, chocolate, crave for alcohol, weed, whatever. Those are um, those are all up here. When I get meth cravings, it's a very physical sensation. Um, my my heart speeds up. I feel like I gotta take a shit. It's the only thing I can think about, and I obsess about it. And especially when I see it, and that's what happened this last time uh, I did meth and almost died. Was like I had no plans on doing meth but like someone at my house busted it out in front of me and I guess I don't know what was I don't know man but I, I he busted it out in front of me and I, I was like nah man I can't do it because if I do it like I'm gonna disappear and everyone's gonna know I'm on it and then like so I didn't do it but that entire fucking day man that entire fucking day I could not stop fucking thinking about it and I just had this like feeling in my body man this like fucking really uncomfortable just bad feeling and it that feeling doesn't go away until i fucking consume meth and i go fucking crazy until i consume the meth and then when i consume the meth i'm like oh relief you know um the just like the the the, the hold this drug has over me it's just insane i've never seen anything like it and this is coming from a guy who shot up heroin and smoked crack and like this, this craving for meth is just on a whole nother level than those things to me, for me personally. Um, but since that day, you know, I pray to God to, to help me with the, my obsession with meth and my cravings for meth. And I haven't, I think about it, like, and I, don't get me wrong, I would love to do something. I, I would fucking love it. But it's not like it was, um, it's not, I ha it hasn't gotten to that physical sensation. Like I'll have the thoughts and they'll pass, 
you know, and that's pretty doable. Like if, if it stays like this, I, I know I can stay off meth. It's just when it gets to that, like when it turns into the physical sensation, um, that's when it's really hard. And I, I, and I'm just hoping that like the more I work my steps, just keep going to these meetings, just stay with people that are good for me. I'm just hoping it doesn't get to that point where I start having the physical sensations and physical cravings for it. Um, but yeah, guys, that's 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 all I got. Um, you know, I'm gonna try to upload videos. You know, a couple times a week, maybe. Um, yeah, I appreciate everyone. I love everyone. Have a good day.